Hi guys, this is Tavius Hobi, and today, today I'm going to share some tips to clear the SDF, Silent, Deadly, and Fierce event quests from Monster Hunter World. Now, you might think of a certain byproduct of eating too many bean burritos <laughs> when you hear the words Silent, Deadly, and Fierce. In this case, however, the phrase refers to the stealthy warriors of the Assassin's Creed series. This particular event quest rewards you with Senu's Feathers, which you can use to craft two special items. One is a layered armor that turns you into the feared Egyptian warrior Bayek from Assassin's Creed Origins. Wait, is it Bayek or Bayek? <laughs> I haven't played the game in a long time. The other item is a new mantle called the Assassin Hood, which not only makes you look like the classic assassins from Assassin's Creed, but also allows you to skulk around and hide faster should the need arise. Now the silent, deadly, and fierce event involves hunting three high-ranked monsters in the arena. That would be Odogarin, Devil Joe, and Lunastra. Now you might think, well, at least Odogarin isn't too hard. That might be true until you realize that he spawns at the same time as Devil Joe. And we all know what happens when you put Devil Joe and Odogarin in the same spot. <laughs> Let's just say someone ends up turning into a certain giant walking pickle's own personal true toy for smacking around unwary hunters. Now, fortunately for me, I thankfully managed to clear my first four tries in one go to get the four Senna's feathers that I needed to craft the bike layered armor and the assassin's hood. My first two attempts, however, were pretty rough. <laughs> That's because I didn't bring any cold drinks and the lance build I used didn't have heat guard, which literally made the Lunastra fight a bit too hot to handle. In my second attempt, meanwhile, I brought the same gear but figured I could Farcaster back to camp to change to my anti-Lunastra build, only to realize that Farcasters didn't work. <laughs> the lesson as always is, I'm an idiot. Fortunately, the Lunastra fight becomes a lot more manageable once you bring the right stuff with you. Here's a list of key items, tools, and skills to bring for the fight. Odogarin and Devil Joe can be a mouthful to handle at the same time. If you get in touch with your inner assassin, however, and become a very very sneaky, you can lure Odogarin to the far end of the map just above the Dragonator and fight him separately. Play it right and you can take out the big red dog before Devil Joe notices you, making things a lot more easy peasy. If the two initial monsters are alerted to your presence at the same time, the fight becomes a bit more tricky. Not only do you end up fighting two monsters at once, which means you have to pay extra attention to watching your back, Devil Joe will also occasionally grab Odogarin with his sharp pickle teeth and use the poor monster as a bludgeoning weapon. On the plus side, Devil Joe's slams also damages the Odogarin trapped in his mouth. On the downside, it does some serious damage to hunters who are hit by the attack as well. If you want to cancel this dangerous combo, just throw a flash pod in front of Devil Joe when he grabs Odogarin with his mouth. If you find yourself having to fight both monsters at once, wearing a temporal mantle allows you to attack without worrying about turning into a ping pong ball. So Devil Joe can hit pretty hard. Fortunately, he's not an elder dragon, so he's susceptible to shock traps and pitfalls. So go ahead and use both to immobilize him so you and your team can go to town on the monster. Just make sure to not be in front of his face once he falls into a pitfall trap. Just because his body is trapped in the ground doesn't mean his big head can't damage you. On the plus side, Devil Joe doesn't come with as much health since this is a multi-monster quest, allowing you to take him down much faster. If you're struggling, you can use the Hanging Boulder Trap and Dragonator against him, but it's usually better to save those for Lunastra. Speaking of Lunastra, once you've dispatched of Devil Joe, she will come out next. You actually get some time before she shows up, so use that short break to heal, pop a cold drink, and for melee users, sharpen your weapon. Then head up to the gate where Lunastra is set to appear and set some mega barrel bombs. Also make sure to bait her into the boulder trap and dragonator if you save those for this part of the fight. Hitting Lunastra with both will definitely help speed things up. Now due to the cramped space and Lunastra's penchant for spreading blue flames on the ground, this is the part of the hunt where you have the highest chance of seeing teammates cart. This is when life powders can be a literal lifesaver for your allies, or even the wide range skill if you decide to use that for this hunt. This is also when having Heat Guard, a Cold Drink, and Fire Mantle come in handy against Lunastra's Flames. Even when my Fire Mantle ran out, for example, I was able to walk over the regular Blue Flames without damage just with the combined effect of Heat Guard and a Cold Drink. Having all three also allowed me to block during her entire Supernova sequence with my Guard Up Lance, 
without worrying about serious ticking damage. If you do suffer from a ton of damage, just eat an Astera Jerky, which heals red damage in a flash. Otherwise, you can also pop a Max Potion. After clearing your first silent, deadly, and fierce event, talk to both the Smithy and Gear Store Lady at the workshop. You know you can talk to them because they'll get those telltale exclamation points on top of their heads. Both will let you know that a new order has been placed at the Trade Yard's Resource Center for the Bayek Layered Armor and the Assassin's Hood Mantle. Each require two Sanus Feather items in order to craft. As always, feel free to leave any thoughts, questions, or your own tips in the comment section. Once again, this is Tabi Asabi, and thank you for watching.